ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 104 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. How you going? Huh? You have a good fucking weekend, did you? Good. I'm ha- I'm happy for you, man. Or woman. Or gender fluid. Whatever the fuck you identify with. You know? If you're out there thinking that, you, that you're... You know what? Today... Today... I'm gender, I'm gender fluid. Today, I woke up and I felt like a woman. But by 12.34 p.m., after I had a late breakfast and a kombucha drink, I felt like a woman. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I was a, I was a woman dressed in man's clothes. And I was so embarrassed, I had to head home immediately. But by the time I arrived home to change into a pretty dress, due to the nature of my gender fluidity, I felt like a man again. <laughs> and so... I went back to the cafe to enjoy my breakfast as a man. Bro, how fucking inconvenient is it to be one of these gender fluid cunts? Who could be bothered? Do you know how expensive that is? Dude, you guys yell at me for spending money on fucking clothes. Imagine if I was gender fluid. Every time I bought something stupid, I had to buy the fucking the female version of it too. That gender fluid shit, I actually don't understand. Like, if you're a man that feels like a woman, fuck yeah. Go for it. Chop your, chop your dick off. Turn it inside out. Make yourself a nice little clit. Go for it. Makes sense, right? If you're a woman that feels like a man. I don't know how the fuck they make a cock out of a cunt, but go for it. Alright? If you're going to spend $100,000... On gender reassignment surgery, I believe you. <laughs> like, no one, that's the whole thing about, oh, it's not real. Bro, yes, it is. These cunts are dropping a hundred grand to look like a, like a four, a four out of ten of the opposite gender. Fucking real, man. No one commits that hard to an idea. No one. Like, sometimes I think it's funny to pretend. I don't know. Yeah, like, sometimes it's funny for me to pretend that I've lost my arm. Right? So I'll put my arm behind my back. Or if I'm really feeling like committing, maybe I'll put my arm inside whatever jumper I'm wearing. So it looks like I've got that empty sleeve. And I'll go, ah, I've lost my arm. And that's, that's a bit of a laugh, but there's no way I would spend 30 grand to get some doctor to chop it off. Because I'm not that serious, man. I'm not that serious about having one arm. I'm, I'm just, just joking around. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you spend a hundred grand turning your penis inside out so that you can be like a 5.5 if you have Caitlyn Jenner money. Like a 5.5 out of 10. And I'm factoring in the fact that she's 70, all right? So for 70, that's a 5.5, all right? Everyone's rating her as, as if as if Caitlyn Jenner was 25 years old. It's like, yeah, she's not going to she's not going to she's not going to give you a boner, but if you saw her in the supermarket, you'd be like, "Oh, yeah, that's a very tall lady." <laughs> <laughs> That's a very tall. What a tall bitch, right? But the gender fluid shit, I don't understand. Especially because the whole gender fluid fluid thing is like part of the whole anti pushing back against gender norms. It's like, oh, gender norms are toxic. 
Meanwhile, I'm gender fluid, so when I feel like a boy, I'm going to wear jeans and boots. But when I feel like a woman, I'm going to wear a pretty dress and enjoy the color pink. It's like, dude, you are gender stereotypes. It just changes depending on how you feel. Because if you really were gender fluid and you didn't believe in fucking gender stereotypes, you would just wear... What's the most gender neutral thing you can wear? Ah, sweatpants and a hoodie, right? Everyone can wear that shit and look like a piece of shit. That should be the uniform of the gender non-binary people. Sweatpants and a hoodie. Because that's what everyone wears, regardless of gender, when they're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> so until I see all these gender fluid cunts walking around in sweatpants and hoodies, I don't believe that you're real. Um, why was I yelling about that? I just, ah, oh, that's right. I was asking about how, how you were and I just started yelling about that shit. Man, I've had the most productive week I've had in months, dude. And it's all thanks to an app. Don't, don't worry. This isn't, this isn't paid. This is not an ad. All right. I haven't had ads on this podcast, podcast since the Dollar Shave Club abandoned me. They said, oh, we're not running ads again until June. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. The shaving industry does slow down from January to June. Everyone shaves throughout the fucking year. Why are you putting a pause on your shaving advertising campaign? I'm going to feed my kids, Dollar Shave Club. Start advertising again, man. Why would they stop advertising from January to June? It doesn't make sense. It fucking blows my mind, man. Everybody's growing beard hairs all the time. All right? <coughs> Sorry, not going to edit that out. Fuck your ears. Bitches got to shave their pubes all throughout the year. In fact, I would argue if you're in America coming off the back of winter, some of these chicks are looking a little bit extra shaggy. It wasn't me. <laughs> And I reckon Dollar Shave Club could really help those bitches out. So what I'm saying is Dollar Shave Club advertising my podcast. But this app, what's what even is the app called? It's just saved my fucking life. It's called Omni Focus. O-M-N-I Focus. Um And dude, it's like uh it's like one of those productivity apps, you know, like Wonderlist or your fucking calendar and all that kind of shit. It's like those ones, but it just makes sense to my brain. Because you know how you ha you'll you hear about all these, oh, you got to look at this app. It'll make you so fucking productive. But, and you look at it and it just doesn't connect with your brain. This one connected with mine because I tried Wonderlist and I tried Google Calendar and all this fucking shit. And uh, I don't know. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't consistently fill in the to-do list and make timelines on this fucking app in a way that made sense. But this one is great. It's called OmniFocus. Um, and it is the only reason why I have managed for like the past two weeks to do all of the shit that I've committed to. Because I am, I'm doing so much shit. Sometimes I have to sit down and remember the things that I've committed to doing. It's like, I right now, man, I'm going insane. I do stand-up comedy right? So I'm trying to write an hour of material for the next tour, which will be later in the year. Uh, I've also got, I'm trying to put out videos every single week. So I'm staying on top of that. Uh, I'm also doing this podcast and I've got the radio show. What else? I'm doing more than that. Oh, I've got my comedy special that I'm trying to fucking finish. It's at the editing process. Uh, I'm also trying to get all of the merchandise ready so that when it comes out, I can send all the hoodies out and all that shit. Uh, fucking what else? I'm also, oh, and I'm also like, yeah, while I'm at it, I'll, I'll add in, let's go to gym five days a week because I'm trying to put on weight. Uh, and then also what's stressing me out the most is I'm trying to get to level 110 in World of Warcraft and I don't have any time to play the cunt because I'm doing all this other shit that doesn't matter when I'm just trying to get to level 110 in WoW. 
All right, I want to get to the end game content. I want to get, I want to gear up. I want to start raiding. I want to do 40 man raids. I want to kill Keltazard, all right? I need to fight the Legion. But all this shit with my career and my real life and being on radio is slowing me down. I need to get ready for the next expansion, Battle for Azeroth. How the fuck am I going to decide the fate of Azeroth? If I can't even get to level 110, because I'm trying to release the biggest comedy project I've ever done in my life. The comedy special. Guys, it's unfair. But thanks to OmniFocus, man. This, whatever this app is, seriously look it out. Look it up. I'm, I'm going to stop saying the name because it sounds like an ad now. It's not. Um, it, it's, it solved my life. Dude, what you can do with it is you can like, it's not just like, Today, day to day to do list, right? So you do day to day to do list, and then you set a due time. So it's not just you look at it and you go, you you know when you write down like eight fucking things you need to do, and you look at it, and you go, oh, there's so many things, and then you just do none of them. You know when you do that, this thing can set a due date, so you can actually order everything in the order that it needs to be done. So I'll be like, all right, so I wake up at fucking eight. And then I go to gym at 9.30. And then at fucking 10.30 or 10.40, I'm writing a video or writing stand-up or, or whatever. And you like schedule in your whole day. And as long as you follow the fucking timeline that you've realistically set for yourself, you can do everything. I've even started to schedule in leisure time because now I'm at the point in my life where I have to, I need to make myself choose to not be working. It's fucked up, man. Oh, I could be doing all this other stuff. And then I've started to notice if I don't play video games or if I don't read comic books or fucking read or whatever, I start to go insane. I'm like, ah! So I have to do shit that is not this. And this app has fucking really helped me with that. Um, so yeah, man, I, I went to gym five days a week. I've changed my whole schedule. Let me tell you all about it, guys. I know you're so interested. But Lewis, I thought you woke up at 6 a.m. every day. Yeah, I used to. Used to, all right? I used to get up at six in the morning every day and that worked for me. <clears throat> and then when radio happened, I, and when I started performing more, I still tried to get up at 6 a.m., but it would just fuck me for the rest of the day because really now I have to be in my peak form. It used to be in the middle of the day where I'd be filming videos or doing the podcast, but now I just work later. So I need to be in my peak form around between 8 to 10 p.m. Because that's when I'm either on radio or performing, recording this podcast or filming because I film later now. So now I've just I've just decided, okay, well, instead of going to bed, at, going to sleep at midnight, waking up at 6, I will just wake up at 8.30, go to bed at 2 a.m. And that's sorted my fucking life out. I'm, you know what I'm like? I am so good at setting up plans and planning shit out, and executing shit, and I am horrendous at changing those plans if they need to be changed. Like, oh, but I spent so much time on this fucking plan. Yeah, but what about these things that have all changed that affects your plan in a negative way? Yeah, but I'm just going to force it. <laughs> so I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to learn to fucking adjust my life to all of the things that I'm doing, because... I know, it's like in the, in the last six months with the comedy special and stand-up picking up and then the radio and weekly videos and that, it's like all this stuff compressed and all this extra shit that I was not used to doing and I've tried to fit into my old schedule and I don't know. What I'm saying is if I was doing as much shit as I am now when I started comedy, I would go insane. But I think I've built up a tolerance to stress and, and, and I have the ability to do time management management much more. I don't know. I'm just musing, guys. You know, maybe maybe this will set me on the path to greatness and I'll become a giant comedian. Could happen. Or maybe I'll just be like, ah, you know what? I'm sick of following a schedule and I'll shoot myself two months down the line. <laughs> Who knows? But I'm hoping for the first one. That's my plan. Um, hey, thanks to everyone who tuned into the first... Uh, show on Fox FM, our first FM show, dude, it was so good, we had resources, we had listeners live, that weren't just tuning into it on a podcast, because they don't have a fucking digital radio, and we could do phone call segments, man, 
Do you know how long we've me and Luke have been wanting to do phoners? Hey, give us a call, 131060. How big's your dick? And then someone, and people actually called. We did three phone segments, and every time we did it, we filled up the boards with people wanting to answer it. Because And, and you know what else was good? They weren't fans. And I don't mean that as in, I don't want to speak to you. I mean that in, often, if fans called up, Fans were the only people, you guys were the only people listening to Triple M Modern Digital because you had to choose to listen to it. You'd get on your fucking computer and load it up. It was the worst shit ever, right? And then when when you guys would call, often we'd be like, hey, tell us about this, whatever fucking thing. And then you guys would call and instead of just answering the question because they know our shit, some people would just reference stuff from the Speared Sunday's podcast or Luke's podcast or one of our videos and then we would just be like, haha, that would be good if you knew the intricacies of our content. Um, but that's bad radio, my friend. <laughs> Whereas the people that were calling up on Fox, they had no fucking idea who we were. They were just people driving. And they're like, oh yeah, I relate to that. I'll give them a call. Which was, which was good. It was good to speak to people who didn't give a fuck about you. Because you're like, oh, okay, if we can make people who have no idea who we are call... That must mean we're making engaging radio, because there's kind of no other way to to gauge whether you're doing well, other than people wanting to call in and choosing to call in. So that was a, that was a lot of fun. Thanks to everyone who tuned in and, and all that. Uh, looking forward to doing another one tonight. Um, no, I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk about the radio shit too much. <clears throat> but yeah, man, I've been I've been to gym five days a week. I've performed twice. I put out a little review. Uh, I filmed a cooking without instructions that will come out in the coming weeks. And I have another Lure review ready to drop on Tuesday. I'm fucking so all over it. I've just figured out that I am doing too much shit to edit my own videos now. I don't edit nothing. Fuck editing. I c- I've got a guy that edits my, edits my videos now. And I'm such a control freak that was so hard for me to let go of. But I realized you don't need to be me to edit my videos. You just need my guidance. And I can just give you a bunch of dot points, do this, 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 use this time, grab this screenshot. And then that's like, instead of me spending eight hours editing and not creating the next thing, now some other guy does it next to me while I'm writing the next video. And if he goes, hey, what do you think of this? I go, nah, change it that way. I like it the other, And, and that's it. And it's so much more fucking efficient. So, I don't know, it was really, really hard for me to let go of that control, but, um, yeah, it was good. Like, for example, the first Cooking Without Instructions, the first episode, I edited that because I wanted to set the tone so I could show someone else this is how I want to edit it. Second episode, that was edited by Todd, the editor, and no one could tell. So that w- that's what made me go, oh, fuck, no one, if, if no one can tell that I'm not editing my videos, I don't need to edit my videos. That's something that I can fucking send off to somebody else and get it done through them. So that's that's a freed up so much time and I think that's the only reason I'm going to be able to stay weekly. And that, you know, that will also help me set up for when the warehouse dream hopefully next year is the goal, the fucking warehouse. Because obviously I would have an, a full-time editor there in the fucking box just doing my shit. But that will come. Until then, it'll be weekly fucking videos. I think I was a couple days late with one because I moved my upload day from Thursday to Tuesday. But it'll be Tuesdays now because I don't, I don't have radio on Monday, Tuesday. So it'll just be that. Anyway, let's stop talking about me, shall we? And my fucking productivity. I... Uh, I went... My girlfriend took me to, for our, for our Val, this is the kind of shit that that my girl's into, for Valentine's Day, she bought me a ticket to something that is in a genre that I had never heard of, it was called immersive theater, immersive theater, and it was called Alone, an immersive experience, now, what it was, (coughs) was, she got herself a ticket. It was one of those presents where she wanted it, so she fucking got two tickets. She's like, ah, it was, it was more for her than for me, right? 
But it's also the kind of thing that she had to buy a ticket for me because I would never, ever do that shit because it sounds like the wankiest thing ever. It was like immersive theater that was supposed to push your boundaries and open up new experiences and change your perspective on things and all that wanky bullshit and buzzwords that fucking kids straight out of art school use to trick 40-year-old white women into spending money on shit they don't need, right? So immersive theater. So my girl gets me this, these tickets, me and her, we go to this thing. Now how it works is it was, um, it's called a loan. So you go through the whole thing by yourself, right? And it's one of those things where there's a whole bunch of actors placed throughout Melbourne City and in controlled environments that walk you through the experience and they will never tell you that they're an actor, right? So you're supposed to just go with the flow of whoever's telling you to do shit. So what happens is me, my girl, three strangers go into a room, five people. There's this bitch doing yoga. And she's wearing face paint and all, doing all this shit and, and talking about, oh, spirits and one and feel free and breathe in, breathe out. She's making us, she, we're like, I walk into this thing and I'm doing yoga with some bitch dressed as a ghost. It was fucked. And then they, they get us to answer some weird questionnaire, right? Where they get a fuck, some guy comes out in a lab coat holding a clipboard and he has like a list of five questions. And none of them mean anything. And he asks each of us, he asks the question and then he goes to all the five people. And they were like, yes or no questions. Like one of them was, do you ever feel like people are watching you? And I was like, no. Another question was, uh, do you believe in reincarnation and could you come back as a tree? I was like, no. And what they would do <coughs> is they would write down the answer. So they go through the five people. They come with a clipboard, would stand in front of one person. They'd be like, no, next person, yes, next person, no. And immediately he starts writing down the answers like they mean anything, all right? I've already cottoned on to the fact that it doesn't matter what you answer. What really matters is where you're standing because they got us to stand on different yoga mats. I'm like, all right, so no matter what the guy on the right answers, He's going wherever he's supposed to go, right? They'll be like, oh, the guy standing on this mat, he goes through here first. But all these other fucking idiots in the room adjusted their answers di to be different from what everyone else was saying. And I felt like that I was the only person telling the truth. So one, one of the questions was, do you ever hear voices talking to you? I immediately go, nah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not playing this game. No. Second person goes, sometimes. Third person, I see him think no, and then decide to say yes. So on it goes. Everyone trying to give a different answer so they have a different fucking experience. <clears throat> sure enough. They finish this bullshit questionnaire and, and the bitch dressed as a ghost doing yoga. She goes, the survey is complete. Thank you for your time. And then four people come up behind us, put hoods over everyone's head, pick them up and drag them away. And I'm the only one without a fucking hood. I'm standing there by myself while all four members of my group just got fucking kidnapped, including my girlfriend. And I'm like, ah, I pay a hundred dollars worth of tickets. I assume there must be a kidnapping involved. If not, my girlfriend's getting human trafficked, and i and the cops are gonna be like, hey, so you witnessed the kidnapping? I'd be like, yeah, and you didn't do anything. Why? I'm like, ah, I don't know. I paid a hundred bucks, so I didn't. I just assumed that a kidnapping would happen. Thought it was part of the artistic experience. Because that was the whole thing. They, they were just saying, you need to breathe in, breathe out, let the experience happen, uh, and just go with the flow. I had to sign, before I went into this thing, a, a fucking agreement acknowledging that there may be some aggressive sexual touching. 
aggressive sexual touching. I paid a hundred dollars to get raped. Or I didn't pay for it. There's no way I would have paid for it. My girlfriend did for Valentine's Day. How romantic, baby. I got you a rape. <laughs> Thanks, doll. Can't wait for our mutual raping. Immersive theater. Anyway, so all the four people got kidnapped. Now I'm by myself. I'm like, okay, now the alone experience part happens. <laughs> um, so there's this chick at the front and she starts doing more yoga. And she's like, do the warrior pose. I don't know what the fucking warrior pose is, bitch. You're dressed like a ghost. And then she does it. It's something like this. I don't fucking know. Where you put your arms out. You don't look like a... You like, like that pose that Usain Bolt does. Right? So we do that. And then we do some more poses. I'm by myself. I'm just waiting for the guy with the hood. I'm like, I know that's going to happen to me. I know you couldn't think of a more interesting way to take me away. I'm going to get hooded. Sure enough, three yoga poses in that I execute horrendously. I hear some guy behind me. I'm like, all right, about to get hooded. And then he fucking hoods me, picks me up, grabs me like around from behind, picks me up, and then takes me away into another room and then he takes the hood off and there's another dude no no t-shirt covered in face paint the dude's jacked standing too close and he looks me in the eyes and says nothing and I'm like hey man <laughs> I'm like hey what's going on man and he doesn't say anything and then he gets fucking paint on his fingers and he and he and he like puts paint on my face like pink face paint down my forehead on my chin two on my cheeks i look like a gay commando and i was like cool bro i just said cool man thanks and then he didn't say anything and then he just turns me around and pushes me through a door and then there were like I don't know, there were like lights on the floor that I'm like, I guess I'm following the lights then. So I start following these lights. And then this girl grabs my arm. No one has said anything to me. I, I wish I'm back with a fucking yoga ghost, but no one's talking to me. This girl grabs my hand, pulls me down to this little tent. This is all, this is all inside a warehouse, by the way, in the middle of the city, right? She pulls me down into a tent and I crawl into the tent I'm too big for it, but I fit in there somehow. There's this dude sitting in the tent, again, with no shirt. I'm like, hey, bro. And he, he says nothing. None of these cunts are talking to me. And then, right, I'm so confused at this point. I don't know what's happening. I don't feel very immersed. I don't feel my third eye being opened. I've just had a bunch of weird shit done to me by shirtless strangers after doing some shithouse yoga with a ghost. Then, right, this dude in the tent, no shirt on. He gets out a glove, like a surgical rubber glove. I'm like, oh, here comes the prostate exam. He starts, he makes a big point of me noticing that he makes a big point of him putting on the glove. So I'm like, okay, he wants me to know that he's put on a glove because he's going to do something that I wouldn't be okay with if he wasn't wearing a glove. That is either mouth, nose, anus. Sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, he puts his glove on and then he just opens his mouth. He hasn't said anything. He just opens his mouth and then he points at me and I do nothing. And then he points at me and points at his mouth and opens it wider. So I open my mouth. I'm like, all right, ah, uh, then he gets his fucking gloved finger. He puts his finger in my mouth. Way too deep. Inappropriately deep. Actually, you know what? Fuck that. He's a stranger. Shouldn't have his finger in my mouth no matter the depth. The depth doesn't even come into this scenario. He puts his finger in my mouth. Why did I let him do that? Guys, because I was part of immersive theater. Because my girlfriend paid a hundred bucks and I promised her I would go into it with an open mind. 
and said, open mine, not open fucking mouth. This dude has his finger in my mouth and I, I let him do it because he's got face paint on. Then he takes his finger out. I'm like, oh, that was horrendous. I hope I can go to the next fucking thing. Nah, not done. Then he gets his finger that's wet now because of me. And then he dips it in some powder that's red. It looks like spices. I'm like, dude, what the fuck's this guy doing now? Then he gets me to fucking grit my teeth, right? He goes, like that. So he closes his mouth and he spreads his lips like that. And he gets me to do it. And I'm like, <laughs> then he gets the finger that's covered in the spices and he fucking brushes my teeth with it all around the inside of my lips and over my teeth. And I'm reaching, I'm reaching my final straw. I don't know why I felt, dude, I got fucking mouth raped by a stranger and I let him do it because I paid a hundred bucks. This dude, it, make, it makes me flash back to all of those fucking consent videos on YouTube. This dude was not picking up on my non-verbal cues, man. <laughs> he was This guy was not reading my body language, bro. If he was in a university, I would get this cunt kicked out for sure. There was no strong, verbal, enthusiastic consent throughout this process, ladies and gentlemen. I got mouth raped by a lone the theater experience. Then he finishes brushing my teeth with a fucking powder and I think, oh good, he's done. Oh good, finally. Nah. Then he gets me to stick my tongue out. He goes, uh, and I do it a little bit. I'm like, uh, and then he goes, no, and he sticks his out even more. He's like, ah, I'm like, all right, ah, and then he gets more shit and puts it on my tongue. Thank fuck it wasn't spices. You know what? It tasted like Dorito dust. Horrible shit. I got it all over my lips, all over my face. And then as soon as he's done with that, this chick grabs my hand and pulls me out of the tent. I'm like, wait, I need to file a rape report. I can't leave. <laughs> and then she grabs my hand. I'm trying to wipe shit off my face. I'm feeling, I felt sick, dude. He put his fingers way too deep. I almost spewed all over his fucking body paint. Anyway, this chick takes me and she takes me into another room with another girl and then there's a cross. I'm wiping shit off my face. I can't even look at the other girl. I'm like, oh, what's this girl going to do? Fucking suck my dick without permission? What's, is that what happens next? I'm standing on a cross and then this girl just stares at me and I'm looking at her and I'm saying nothing I'm, I've had it I'm shitty I'm saying nothing I'm just looking at her she's looking at me and then she goes oh fuck you scared the shit out of me bro you scared the shit Dude, I've been dancing in the background of your podcast for five minutes. Oh, can you even see it? Oh, man. I've been whipping and nay-naying behind you for too long. I just got bored. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. I don't even know how to talk to him. Come round. Come round. I don't know which button it is to talk to him. Oh. Man. Scared the fuck out of me. Oh, dude. Bro, you scared the shit out of me. Did you see me jump? No. I, you, you watch I don't it. know how you didn't notice me. Because I'm looking this direction. But, like, can't you see me in the camera? I'm not looking at the, the camera. I'm looking into the lens. My, for five minutes, my face just pressed over against the glass. <laughs> I wonder if you made to see that. Oh, you probably will yeah. if you were here. Yeah. Were you there? The whole time. Amazing. Yeah. That was great. I was just talking about my um alone experience thing. Um, which I can't tell you about because we're going to talk about it on air. So I'm going to, at the end of the episode, I mean, next episode, I'm going to talk about it. All right. Um, stay tuned. Sorry. I've got to go. We need to, do we need to plan the show? I don't care. All right. You can keep going. <laughs> now I got, we got to plan the show. I'll see you next week. Sorry. This one's a bit of a short one. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you later. You fucking one last whip. One last, one last day, day, day. Day. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Everyone just, everyone just fucking unsubscribe. <laughs> Have a shit one. <laughs>